I don't even know what to say, y'all. Like, I, Justin and I were talking before the show. Justin had to calm me down a little bit. Um, Rajiv wasn't even going to be here, and he needs some therapy. Like, this sucks. And let's talk about it. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. <laughs> um, we are reacting to a today's episode. A dumpster is fire. On. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan, which is not a dumpster fire. Um, if you'd like to, the kind of driver likes to push things just a little bit further, take the Armada, the Rogue, or the Pathfinder, and go find your next big adventure, something the Badgers will not be doing because they did not take a Nissan. Check them out today at NissanUSA.com. And we got Rajiv for a few minutes. Um, all right. This is <laughs> like this sucks. This sucks, guys. Um, I'm not gonna loop that out enough. I think my biggest frustration, and I'll just start here, and then we'll kick it around. And I know Rasheed, you're limited. I, we were never in this game. Like we were never in this game. We didn't lead for one minute. We were down 15 to four. It looked like we. It, it honestly <laughs> looked like we had a, a rager last night, and we woke up 30 minutes before the game. Like I. We- I we were down 15 to four. It could have been like 25 to four. Like they were so frenetic on offense that they were running terrible sets that they easily, if they could, if they were to run any coherent offense, we could have really been in trouble early. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know what to say at this point. Um, I, uh, I'm really, really just sad. Like when the Badgers season is over, it is such a just just a, a crappy day for me and for all Badger fans. And to see it go down like this against a team that, frankly, I'm sorry, they're not even that good. They're not that good. Like they just I we look I, I, like I would agree with that. Okay? We they, they. I just how do you not show up? How do you not show up? How do you do this to to your fans? Like really. Like I don't even put I put this all on the players honestly and yes there's some that there's definitely it's it's I mean, it's a little bit of mix but the players today come on I'm sorry is, Tyler Wall Stephen Crouch Stephen Crouch should play okay like I just feel like nobody showed up Stay J Store hey, did you even decide to get off the bus I mean honestly like do you want to be here anymore This is ridiculous I I'm sorry you cannot treat your fans like this you cannot put up this kind of a showing in the NCAA tournament it is not acceptable. I am just heartbroken because I I hate when the Badgers lose and and to see a first round exit again, just it's like seriously it's I just feel so horrible and I I, I needed to I'm really, I have a house guest here by the way and that's why I wasn't gonna be on the show tonight but I was like and she is a North Carolina fan she went to the University of North Carolina so she's ready to watch a whole you know day of basketball tomorrow and I'm like I can't watch this unless I come on here and get some of this off my chest because it will make me feel better. Drag and, her down to your level and show her the, the <laughs> UNC Badger game from a few years back. Yeah. So the only <laughs> thing that's going to keep me afloat tomorrow is betting on these games because I just, I, I'm honestly like <laughs> I'm so hurt, guys. I just feel like it was one of the worst. Really, a season high nineteen turnovers. What we're playing a team from the Sun Belt or whatever the conference is. Get out of here with that crap. This is absolutely unfreaking acceptable. Well, you know, this is one of those things that I thought was going to be this the scouting report for for James Madison. I said they were going to pressure us because every team that's pressured us has rattled us and made us look bad, and. Ryan and I were discussing before he came on. We're not a good defensive team, and if you can if you can take away our offensive efficiency, we're in trouble. And that's what they did. Like we just weren't good offensively because they took us out of our rhythm, and because of that, they were able to exploit us enough on defense because we're just not good defensively. And that's that was effectively the game. Like they just kept the intensity up for most of the game. By the time we started hitting some shots, it really didn't totally matter anymore because they were starting to hit shots, and they had enough confidence. And I said this when when we got into it. If you let them get confident, it's going to be a problem because we're not good enough defensively to take them back out of that. And that's kind of what we saw tonight. Yeah, I want to just say I was wrong. Like, I, I will always try to own my receipts. This this is really painful, guys. Like, I, I am really feeling this, and it's hard for me to be on this show right now. I'm going to be straight up. Like, it's 12 – 30 ish my time 
I have multiple IPAs coursing through my my body. Are you on an IV of them? I'm, I'm, I'm about point. to go just chug a bottle of tequila. I, <laughs> I, I, like, I love this team. This this breaks my heart. It sucks. It does. But I was wrong. It's exactly right. Like it's just heart. It's heartbreaking. It's like. It's just so painful to see this. I'm I'm so excited. I love March Madness. Like we we've we we're just so pumped about this. And to really to see this performance after such a great Big Ten tournament, after everything we did in that tournament, that all of a sudden filled us with a bunch of hope. Right? We thought that we thought this was going to happen after in after February, and then we got this rush of hope because Rutgers and Purdue, and then we beat Purdue. And you can't beat James Madison, but you can beat Purdue. And you can you can go against Illinois and do what you do, but you, you can't do that. It's upsetting, it's draining, and I just I I don't even I'm I'm just so mad. But I had to come on here today. I'm gonna leave now because I'm gonna go drink over there with my friend, and I I'm gonna just not think about this rest of the night. But thank you for letting me on for a few minutes because I am really sad. And for all Badger fans out there, believe us, we feel your pain. That you're listening to this because either you're a JMU fan and you're really happy, or you're a Badger fan. Most likely, <laughs> you just are. You're drowning in these sorrows, and we're with you. We feel your pain. This sucks for all Badger fans. We put our heart and our souls into this. Wow. Obviously, if you're either if you're listening to this or you're on this show, guess what? We of course all we do because you're listening to this podcast. You love the Badgers like we do, and it's awful. It's so so painful. I hurt my hand because I went into my garage and and banged the wall as hard as I can. I, I I don't even know how to react right now. You guys know me; I'm an optimistic, positive person. Sure. But this is the most painful that I've really ever felt in a long while. You have season high turnovers in the first round of the NCAA tournament. That means you chose to just not get not get off the bus. No effort, absolutely nothing. It's completely unacceptable. Gentlemen, have a great night, all you Badger fans out there. Talk to you soon. I'll be back. Tomorrow will be a better day, Rajiv. But I am. Um, I'm sorry. You're Good night, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for sending me the link, man. You're I needed. Welcome. I needed this. You're welcome. All right, let's let's switch this back over to just Justin and I. So I, I just want to say it. Like I, I get where he's coming from, and that's kind of where like I've moved past that, and I'm actually in the worst spot it is to be a fan, which is I'm apathetic, which means that there's I'm just devoid of mo emotion when it comes to it at this point because it's like I can't invest myself in it anymore because I know what I'm what my expectations are. And I, I when we saw the first five minutes of this game, I'm like, we're in trouble. Yeah. I'm like, I do not like how this is playing. I I, I can see everyone just looks uncomfortable on the court. This is not a good sign for us. And so the way the game started playing out, I'm like, I don't have high expectations for us to bail ourselves out of this. And it's it sucks because I can't even get angry because I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I I, I called this. Like this is one of the things I kind of expected to happen. I really expected JMU to come after us yeah. and say, we're going to take it from you. And I expected it was either we were going to be like, all right, little boy, pat on the head, and we're going to take advantage, you know, like put it, take it to him, or we were going to wilt. And that's kind of what happened. Like we just didn't, we didn't take it as seriously as we should have. And it's, and it's kind of been that way all season. Like we kind of had this chip on our shoulder. Like we can just go out there and we can just out shoot, we can shoot our way to a win. Yeah, it frustrates me. Like, listen, I'm going to give you your flowers. You were right. Again, I was wrong on this. Uh, I also want to give James Madison some credit. Like, you got to give teams credit. Like, if there's any James Madison fans in here, listen. your team brought it. They, they deserve yeah. that win. Um, they did I, one of the things that's the hardest thing to do, which is to play with high effort for 40 minutes. Yeah. All right. I think, man, I am just so frustrated because, like, honestly, you you and I have been fans for a long time. People in the chat have been fans for a long time. Mm -hmm. the, the real ones are here. Like, we got 500 people watching. Y'all are the real ones. We've all had a bunch of heartbreaking losses, right? Mm -hmm. Like basketball, you think Florida, you think Notre Dame, you think obviously Duke, Kentucky the one year. Like, this isn't even the heartbreaking loss. It's the fact that we never felt like we were in it. Yeah. Like I can take, I I can honestly listen. I'm still gonna be upset, but I can take like a last minute they hit a shot or it's back and forth. Mm -hmm. We were we were never in this game, like from the tip. And I think that's what's so disheartening, man. And this is the one spot where I'll push back a little bit on Rasheed. Like I don't think the players played well. I think they got to take accountability for that. There's a ton of turnovers, a ton mm -hmm. of smoked layups. We were six of sixteen at the from, on layups. That's from a, a stat I got from a coach Gothier. That's ridiculous. Six for sixteen, but. Ultimately, it starts at the top. It and does. It's ready to play. Um, that and the defense. Like I, I'm sorry. I'm so tired of watching guys not be in place on defense, not running back off of misses, 
and having bad things happen. And against a team like JMU, that's exactly what they want to do. They want you to kind of half-ass it, so to speak, down the down the on the while you're getting back on defense and give them opportunities. It's an easy way to get fouls. It's an easy way to get easy shots. And they're a team that realizes that if they just play harder, that's your way of getting easy opportunities against a team that's more talented and has more size. Yeah, and Justin said we got within six in the second half and still never really felt within reach. Like, I yeah, I think it. if they hit that layup, that that's that's probably the the tipping point. Yeah, like, that, that would have been their opportunity. And went right into that Friedel three, and that's just just like yeah. that. It went from six to nine, and you felt like that was that was that Mike Five Tyson swing. knockoff. You were like on the ropes, or not not knockoff. Yeah, uh, that was Mike Tyson. He yeah, just they, not about at that. They point. threw a wild haymaker back and connected. That was it. Um, we're going to keep talking about this. We have a ton of comments I want to get to. And Justin, please, I have 20 of them starred. Um, if there's any you see, there's a ton of them in here. But we do need to take a quick <laughs> I don't break. even want to know how many are in there. <laughs> uh, we do need to take a quick break. And listen, comedy is fun for our friends of the show over at Manscaped. Um, listen, if you need to take care of some of the overgrown brush down in the, the back country, like go get the lawnmower 5.0. This bad boy is waterproof if you want to do a little shaving in the shower in the bath in the backcountry stream with the grizzly bears you are good with the lawnmower 5.0 from our new friends of the show over at manscape manscape is the number one source if you want to need to do a little spring cleaning if you want to get down there and take care of a little business and be careful on the skin manscape is the way to do it use code locked on at manscape.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping for that lawnmower 5.0 I've had the 1.0. I've had the 2.0. I can't wait to try the 5.0. That's manscaped.com, 20% off and free shipping. Use code locked on at manscaped.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by our good friends of the show over at Game Time. And I got to be honest, I am so happy I did not utilize Game Time's incredible ability to find great tickets to spend money to come to this game in Brooklyn because I almost did. And if I had bought tickets, I would have used Game Time and code locked on for $20 off and I would have spent a ton of money driving to a game. That would have infuriated me. And I'm trying, I'm at the point with Justin where I'm trying to get my nine year old really into the Badgers. This would not have been the showcase no, to help. He would have been a James Madison fan. He would have been like, Dad, this James Madison this team, other team is so good. So <laughs> thankfully, I did not take advantage of the incredible offers that Game Time has. Uh, use code locked on for $20 off. Download the app. They are the best ticketing app for whatever you want to do, uh, whether it's sports, theater, concerts. I've talked about it, they are incredible. If you want to get great tickets, game time, locked on, $20 off. All right, Justin, let, let's keep going here. What do we got in comments? Do you have anything you want to throw up there? Oh, uh, let's take a look. Uh, let well, me, let me start. I got a bunch of them start, and then you can start some too. Um, Ryan Willie, Reg, will Rajiv and Ryan stop wearing rose-colored glasses and finally see that guard should be fired? I'm not there yet. I, I know people want – people really Ryan? want – Ryan? Ryan? I, I just – can I just be really quickly honest on this? The this first walk? sign of admitting er, – <laughs> Of ex- is accepting you have a problem. I know. I I am so frustrated with this loss. And I just I know where you're at. Let me let me ask you on this because this is this is where I, I think we need to. What what do you legitimately feel like his ceiling is? And don't tell me sweet 16s because that's six years ago or whatever now, and that's with Bo Ryan's players. What do you think since in these last five or six years with his players? What do you think his legitimate ceiling is? I do think it's, I don't know. Like, I, I guess, here's my, here's my, I, I want to answer this. I, I promise you, I do. I'm not trying to sidestep. I promise you. I, and I'm not trying to die on any hill by myself either. Like, I, I own my receipts. Like, I just don't feel like emotionally I can have this conversation right now. I'm so, that's, and that's fair, frustrated by this loss that I feel like I'm going to say things that I haven't fully thought through. <laughs> I mean, I think you probably have. Like, emotion is the way we have dealt. You've you've been rational with this up until now, and I've been kind of leaning the other way. And I feel like I've actually been pretty rational with it because my perspective has simply been: I don't think he's a coach that can get you beyond a a Sweet Sixteen like that. And that's what the a, like his best lineup is going to get you to a Sweet Sixteen. I haven't seen him be able to build a roster yet. That tells me he's capable of building a team that is the same as what he he inherited under Bo Ryan. Mm-hmm. We just haven't seen the depth. We haven't seen the the level of talent and skill that those teams had. 
Like they they had legitimate players that you could you that had go to moves to get you a bucket when you needed one. This team really doesn't have that. Like there's no is there anybody on the court that you look at like in a, in a tough situation you're like we're going to him he's going to be like and and Carl's a prime example of this. Whether it was Hap or whoever or Nigel, it was if I isolate him on the block, he's going to get a good shot against whoever's on him. The closest would probably be Wall, but Wall if you get somebody who's athletic and has some like quickness mm-hmm. to them, he struggles with that. What he does do well with is slow bigs, which is why Zach Eady hates him. Like, he just makes him look stupid. He puts him in a blender. Yeah, I mean, there's there's nobody – I mean, you'd go back to Johnny Davis to be the last guy that you'd feel comfortable yeah. doing that. Um, but he but, I don't know if he had a go-to move, though, really. Like, I mean, I guess you'd say his mid-range jump shot, but that wasn't a high percentage shot. Like, he had a couple games where he got hot with it. Yeah, this team certainly doesn't have that. I mean, we've talked about that a couple times this year. We're like, who's the go-to score when you, you're down in the march and you need a bucket? Like, yeah. listen, AJ Starr disappeared today. Like, I because uh, he's the closest guy. When you, I think you look in the roster, maybe it's Wall, but it's him or Store that you look at the roster and say it's one of these guys. But they both kind of no-show today. I think Wall's hurt. I mean, I, mean, I think that's pretty obvious. But um, Store didn't play very well either today. And Again, like I, I think the players bear responsibility and accountability here, Justin. Like there's there was plays where they were just throwing the ball out of bounds. They were like dribbling up their foot. They were taking ridiculous shots. They were playing hero ball. But yeah. I I'm a Navy guy. Like I've talked about this before. I talked like I talked about this with Luke Fickle recently when I talked about some of the hires that didn't work out. It starts at the top. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, it all starts at the top. And if you I don't think losing to a 12 seed is a death knell. I think if you aren't competitive to a 12 seed in round one, like that's a problem. And again, yeah, that's we, we lost by double digits and we, yeah. we were the higher seed. And this is where it gets down to it. Cause like, there's no other way to color this. This is a bad loss. Like it's one thing to get upset with a buzzer beater or something like that in a game like this. It's another to get your butt flat out kicked in the game like this. And we got our butt kicked. Mm-hmm. Like this is a game where, I mean, if if they push it at the end, we probably lose by fourteen. Oh yeah, so, we deserve by fourteen. So yeah. So well, I mean, thankfully they they just ran the clock out instead of continuing to run offense. But and and by the way, Justin, they tried to give it to us in the second mm-hmm. half for a period of time. Mm-hmm. Like we had four or five stops in a row, and we went down the court turnover. Um, we played hero ball turnover, missed layup. Like, well, like I said, the first half even, they ran really bad offense for a long period of time. We're lucky that we weren't down way more with all those turnovers. Yeah. Well, Hannah says, with all due respect, and I love Will's comments as always, man. I appreciate you in the chat, bro. Uh, well, with all due respect, Ryan, no Sweet 16s in like seven years. If you want a top-notch program, how can you even justify keeping them? Uh, it's a fair perspective. Uh, yeah. Hugh <laughs> Allen says, really quick, I just want to throw this in there. Just sorry to cut you off. Uh, if Hugh, Hugh, if I knew you were going to be there, this is a good dude. I've talked to him on DMs. I'm so mad a night which will live in infamy comparing this to Pearl Harbor, but it does kind of feel like that. I'm so drunk right now. I'm sorry. It is not Pearl Harbor. Um, I am on the 4-5 Express to Grand Central Station. JMU fans are literally partying, at, partying outside Barclays. Uh, have, hashtag never again. Yeah, Hugh, if you, I knew you were going to be there. I would have made an effort to come, actually. Uh, but, Justin, sorry, I cut you off. No, I mean I, – I... <laughs> It, it is the way I look at this from a perspective of the program in itself is what, what do you want to be? And mm-hmm. if your coach isn't capable of delivering on that, then you need to move on. And I don't care what he's done in the past. I don't care if you've had some nice wins or whatever, it's fine. And, and we can look at teams that have failed. Like I know we use the Nebraska correlation for football. You can't stop trying. Like you can't be afraid to make a change simply because of what might happen and go wrong. Because you also have to look at it from the perspective of, yeah, but something could go right too. You could end up getting the right person in the job. And suddenly you dominate the Big Ten for the next decade or 20 years. Like you can't be afraid to to win, is more or less the way you look at it. Like you you got to be shrewd and find people that you know are talented and good at what they do. But you can't be afraid. Like, in all honesty, if you're if you're Macintosh and you you think you're good at your job and you trust your intelligence, if you don't think that he's the guy, 
you need to fire him and you need to go out there and say, I'm, I'm good enough at this job that I can find somebody who is a quality hire that can get me to where I want to go. I, I can tell you this, at least based on conversations leading into this game, I don't think he's on the hot seat. I don't no. think he's fired over this. I know people want that. No, I, it won't be this year. It's going to be, it will probably be next year if, if something goes wrong, but, yeah. but with but some of the, the, the smoke that's out there, next year could be a bad year. Yeah. No, this one, this doesn't help. Uh, Winning Gambler says I would take the JMU coach right now over guard. I'll put this comment up because who look, which team, if you if you knew nothing about either team, Justin, you'd never watch basketball. You're an alien that landed on Earth. Which team looks more athletic? Like they look. They, they, it wasn't Earth. close. They it were definitely close. more athletic. And who, we, we struggled to get penetration because of the fact that we could not, they were fit quicker than us. Who, look, who looked like they wanted it more? Like I, it felt like they. Again, and that's more of the player side of it, but because I don't, I'll tell you this: I don't think it's a coach's job to motivate players. I think it's a coach's job to prepare them. Um, motivation, I, I, so I heard a coach tell, say this one time at a clinic, and I thought this was really good, Justin. He said, "I can either motivate you or I can coach you." I think it's players' jobs to be motivated, but I don't think I think this was a failure on both ends. I think the players well, didn't help, and I don't think the coaches had them in the right were were, were prepared from the get go. So there's there's a couple of ways I look at at some of this and why why we struggle so much with what we do in this with with this year especially with the pace um, when teams really get into us like this the difference is under Bose teams they were very adept at playing with pace and being like we're gonna slow you down mm-hmm. we're gonna dictate this game and I feel like guard has lost his way in a, in a way with the trying to trying to kind of update what he's doing and move into it where they just don't seem to understand like where they want to play with some of this. And it shows because, okay, if you want to play at a faster tempo, you have to get comfortable playing at that tempo. If you're going to be playing against teams like this, that want to get into you and and rush you, you need to play. That's how you need to practice. Like you need to be able to play against this and be able to be comfortable playing as a team that wants to get into you and play defensively that way. When you're not doing that and you're just grinding out half court sets and stuff like that in practice, that's what you're going to be good at. You're not going to get good at being able to work off of teams that really want to extend you and, and get into you, which is why teams like this in March tend to be problematic for a lot of teams. If you're a team that likes to press or likes to get really aggressive defensively, and most of these teams have been playing like in the Big Ten, the the Big 12, and the SEC, where they don't see a lot of that type of defense. That's where you kind of throw them on their heels. They're not used to being pressured like that because coaches don't want to take unnecessary risks. But when you're a team like this where you're limited, that's your way of kind of hiding some of your, your faults a little bit. We're going to just – we may not have the athleticism, so what are we going to do? We're going to go with aggression. And – if we play it the right way, yeah, we may get beat here and there, or we could rattle them, and now they're playing on their heels the rest of the game and getting sloppy. And that's what we kind of see in these tournament games. And that's where, though, this team, and I put this on the coaches and the players, shouldn't get rattled that easily. Like, they're, they're the counters this team has. You're right. Like, Jam, you can, can heat you up a little bit. But a good team, a, I, sh- I don't want to even say a good team because I think this team is good, but may- maybe not. Maybe, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say that after this performance. Um, we do need to take a quick break, Justin, for our friends of the show. We're coming back. Uh, there's a bunch of comments in here. we got 600 people watching, which is amazing. You guys are incredible. Guys and gals are incredible, and we both appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Honestly, this makes us feel better, too, to be able to do this and, and process it a little bit. Um, today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Justin, do you drive? Typically, yes. <laughs> do you like seeing what's around the next corner? In life? I don't have a horse and buggy, if that's what you're asking. Do you like seeing what's around the next corner in life? Are you I do. Are you the type of driver that pushes for adventure? No. <laughs> you are not helping me in this ad read then. If you are the type of driver. I don't like taking risks with my driving. I don't trust other people, all right? That's looking to see what's around the next corner. You have to check out the all-new 2024 lineup of Nissan SUVs. It's the Armada, the Pathfinder. Um, they have incredible stuff. If you have a big family, load them up in the Armada. It can take eight, four by four, wherever you want to go for that next big adventure. That's a basketball team and three people on the bench. That's what the Armada will do for you. And listen, I was going to use the Badgers in this ad read. I can't do that anymore. So let's just say the UConn Huskies are the Armada, the top-seeded team, and they're going to take care of business in this year's tournament. 
take they the Nissan. The first one. Yeah. Oh my goodness, they look good. Pathfinder and the Armada, go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com and remind me to never let Justin help me on an ad read again. Um, <laughs> sorry. And with, with that, let's get some comments. I, I do want to do this, Justin, quick. Max Glesman showed up. Yeah. He came to play. And he was one of the few people that didn't look rattled in this game for the most part. Like, he had his moments where he was a little sloppy. But if anything, I'd say he was almost trying too hard. He's the guy that early in the season I said I thought was going to be the emotional leader. And what I took away from it was is I think that Max kind of was that, but I don't know how many people follow. This was not a fiery team. This was not a team that looked – like you always have to have that one player that kind of gets everyone kind of headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we need, to, we need to tighten the screws. We need to play harder. This team just didn't have that. Like anytime they seemed like they needed to actually like grit down and like really bear down and play hard, it just didn't seem like it was there at all this yeah. season. They they couldn't string enough stops together. Like they, they couldn't string <laughs> And that's been all season. Like that's that's not even just yeah. this game. And and we were talking before the show. To me, this was a defensive like the defensive issue, but we've had defensive issues the entire year. To me, this was an offensive failure. Like we knew going into March, right? If this team was going to advance the offense, it would be offense. Yeah. And this offense failed today. Like mm -hmm. 19 turnovers. They shot. You scored 20 points in the half. Yeah. Like, come on. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. You scored 20 points in the half on a team geared around its offense. It's yeah, just with a six, nine center. It's completely unacceptable. Um, and there's no, there's no, excuses for it man it's completely unacceptable um all right let me throw some comments up justin if you see anything you want to jump into mm -hmm. uh chris hop 18 turnovers the rest doesn't matter axel says guards gotta go ryan timothy says that was absolutely embarrassing um christopher says remember when you said the refs do not let you play as physical in the <laughs> tournament this was a physical game i said that you don't know what you what you're gonna get from the refs they can go all over the place but the big 10 plays physical and they normally don't let you get away with that as much in the tournament because we've seen Big Ten teams that get in foul trouble a lot in the in the NCAA tournament. Now, that was not the case in this game. The officiating, they, they flat out will let them play. And to an extent, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I don't want a bunch of ticky-tack foul calls being called the entire game. I want the players to decide it on the floor. Now, there were times when this got a little bit too handsy. Like there were, it should have been called a little bit just to tighten things up early in the game and just be like, Hey, we're going to let you play, but we're not going to let you just get away with murder. And that's, they, they got away with a lot. They also were just very aggressive and, and made plays a lot of the time too. Like we were rattled. We were kicking the ball around ourselves. Like they didn't always have to get, it wasn't necessarily follows. It was just us being sloppy. Yeah, I agree. I put 0% of this on the reps. I didn't like how the reps really called it. I'm going to be, Straight up, yeah. Justin was. I would have liked it a little bit cleaner. Like I wish they would have kept the game a little more under control. Yeah. I thought there was some handsiness, but this is a hundred percent on the Badgers. I, I put zero percent of this on the refs, but I, I do think they let it get a little physical. But whatever. Ryan Eiler says, one hundred sixty-two days till Badger football. There's that. First practice was today. Uh, there's that. Um, let's see. There's there's a question up here. A comment from. Let's see if I can find it, Ryan. Ryan says, I want to hear Ryan's spin of a disaster this season. I, I don't think this season was a disaster. I don't know if that's spin or not. I, I don't think it was a disaster, Ryan. I am really frustrated about today's game, though. No. It's not a dis it's it's lukewarm, is is really what it is. Like this is a season that was if you have a really good coach, you're this is your down year. And you you drop the ball and you're hoping that next year you have a good recruiting class coming in and you can jump up a little bit. I, I don't know what to expect next year because, honestly, I don't know what the roster construction is going to look like for next year. There's going to be some changes. Yeah, there's going to be a lot. Like, yeah. I mean, we can just talk about some of the stuff we didn't know. Like, Gus didn't travel. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a real bad the sign. one, right? He didn't go to the, the Big Ten tournament either. Uh, I don't know if he went to Big Ten. I know he didn't travel to Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, there's been a ton of smoke, and I'm not here to confirm or deny anything, but there's been a ton of smoke about store. Mm -hmm. uh, like this, this roster is going to look different, and Daniel Freetake's coming in, which is going to help, I think. But this is another big offseason for guard, and he's got holes to if, fill. If Store leaves, this team could be in a lot of trouble next year, a mm -hmm. lot of trouble. Because as as 
inconsistent as he can be in terms of efficiency, he he's kind of their get out of jail free card a lot this year. Whereas what we've talked about in the past with this team has been if they're running good sets and they can't get a good shot, they're just kind of stuck. And that's what happened last year. If you lose a guy like store, that's what you're going to be back to. I love Blackwell. He's not a guy who's capable of manufacturing a bunch of shots for himself. There's been usually these things. If there's smoke, there's usually fire yeah. usually. And there has been a ton of people that have reached. I don't know. I, I just, I don't think he's going to be back next year. That's just a gut feeling I have. Um, Justin, anything else? I mean, we're up to 1244 Eastern. I don't know. We're going to talk a bunch more basketball. I'm not – the one thing I'll say is I'm not ready for – I'm going to talk about great guard. I'm just really frustrated with this game, and I just got to figure that part out of it out for me. Yeah, I – I mean, the way I look at it is I'm just hoping that we can get headed in the right direction. Listen, NIL is not going to be the issue here. I'm seeing people bringing that up. The issue here is – I hate to say it, but the, the coach just isn't a great recruiter. Like, I, I realize he got store here, but if you were an amazing recruiter and coach, you're going to hold on to these guys and you're going to stack them. And that's kind of what we talked about with, with, like, Fickle. If Fickle's who we think he is, he's going to start stacking classes like what he had last year. And then suddenly you have an, an abundance of talent that's there. We have never consistently had guard piecing together really good classes on top of each other and in fact i would still say that our class construction right now is a, a train wreck because we'll have years where we have one guy and then yeah. we'll have years where we have to fill five spots and it's like this is not how you want to be doing this ideally you're bringing in three guys a year yeah. and maybe you have to take an extra guy if you have somebody that leaves early well and that's been going on for years with him um we're still paying the price for some of the disastrous classes in the 18-19 mm -hmm. cycle. Those guys should be fifth-year seniors now. They should mm -hmm. be – like, that. that's been going on for a while with guard. And I feel like the last couple of years he's gotten better with it, but it's yes. still not good enough. Like, it's but, still but, not good I guess I would say the only guy that I've looked at out of these classes, the, the, the few that are coming in here, are realistically – I think we would really like Blackwell, but I'm not sure he's a guy who's a dynamic college player for sure. I think he can be really good, like all-conference good. But I'm not sure. Like, free take is going to be the guy. If, there's, if he's if he's going to have one, that's going to be the guy that you look at, and you're going to like. He's a guy who could take over a game because I don't think Blackwell is going to be that type of player. I think Blackwell can be a guy who's going to be. I'm going to average 15 or or 18 points a game, but it's not going to be a guy that's going to blow up for 35. He's free take is a guy who could be that guy who goes out there and absolutely torches somebody. I think Blackwell could be a better all around college player than Store in a couple yeah. of years. But I don't think he's going to be the volume scorer that story is. Yeah. Um, that's where free take. I agree. He, that. It's not his game. Like he's not a guy that looks for a shot that much. No, yeah. uh, there's a ton of comments in here, guys. I apologize. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. I'll take a bunch of these. We'll wrap them up. We'll respond to them. Brian Wojcik says, "What part of guard needs to be fired? Don't you get? We've not been to the Sweet 16 for seven years now. The program has trended downward throughout guards nine years." I, Ryan, I've already said I want him gone. I just know that it's not going to happen yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm more on the fence. Brian, listen, your perspective is incredibly fair. Like I, we say a lot in this show, however people want a fan, as long as people are respectful, I, we respect all opinions and perspectives on here. Listen, this is – I'll say this. This is a really bad mark on Greg Gard's resume. Now, mm -hmm. you've lost to multiple double-digit seeds in the Big Ten tournament or in the, in the in March Madness tournament. You haven't got to the second round in a while. Like, eventually, this is a win or you don't get to keep your job business. Mm -hmm. And the expectations at Wisconsin are really high. They um, are is not acceptable like this this performance is not acceptable and i would be hard pressed to find somebody who would say yes this was a good enough performance um mm -hmm. that's where i'll leave that just any last thoughts sorry I, I kind of monopolized some of that i apologize no, i mean i guess the biggest thing is hey it's it's gonna it will hopefully get better and if it if he doesn't show it this next year i feel fairly confident that that we will move on like if we end up taking a step back this next year instead of moving forward I would be shocked if he still has a job because what are you even doing then? Like you, you're at that point, you're risking the, the financial support of the program mm. by continuing to let us be mediocre, which it kind of is like, I'm not, I, I realized we were in the, 
upper middle half of the Big Ten, but that's the middle of the Big Ten. You're not a top three team or whatever, and I realized we were there for a while. This was a really – everyone was kind of stuck in the middle this year for the, the, the conference. In a normal year, I feel like we would have been significantly lower where we actually would have placed in the conference had things been not been as – kind of scattered as it was. It's basically Purdue and Illinois and everybody else. Yeah. Listen, I this, I don't know, man. <laughs> I I just cannot tell you how frustrated I am right now. Um, but, hey, we have a bunch of people in the chat, in the comments. Um, I think Justin and I would both say we appreciate all you guys so, so much. Justin does the Bucky Report. I'm sure everybody is familiar with that and watches that. Um uh, Thank you so much for joining us this entire basketball season, man. And we're going to be here for football, recruiting, and continuing on. So really do appreciate everybody. Justin, thank you. Yep. You too, a, man. Thanks for having me on. A fun season. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Oh, are we not done yet? <laughs>